Have you inherited a house with siblings and you have all decided that it is time to sell the house? Well, first of all, I'm really sorry for your loss. I'm sure there are a lot of emotions going on and this can be a challenging time. I wanna let you know, I do specialize in working with siblings when they've inherited properties and they need to sell. So I do come from a different perspective than maybe not uh, all realtors. So I'm here to help you. But I'm gonna to talk today about three different scenarios that you might be finding yourself in right now and finding the best solution for you. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Annie Baker. I'm a realtor here in Silicon Valley in Northern California. I specialize in selling homes. A lot of times they're in trust, they're in probate. Uh, sometimes people are just downsizing, moving out of the area, retiring, but this is my specialty and I do a lot of inherited property sales. So I'm very comfortable working with siblings um, just to get to the point to decide that it's you're going to all be in agreement with selling the house can be a challenging time. I actually have done another video of things to consider before getting to this point. The link is above. So have a look at that video. But for today's video, I'm assuming you are all in agreement that it's time to sell the house. And I'm gonna talk about three different scenarios you might find yourself in today and help you find this best solution so that we can get the house sold for the highest amount of money because you'll all be splitting the proceeds. So scenario one, the house has a lot of deferred maintenance and is really dated. Okay, I know a lot of people find that their parents have lived in a house for 40 plus years and they loved it just as it was the first day they moved in and maybe they haven't done any upgrades. Uh, maybe they didn't like to let go of their belongings and it's a bit of a hoarder house. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the yard, lots of in the garage, but I'm gonna assume all the belongings are out of the house and you are looking at a house with uh, deferred maintenance and dated. So I think you have two really good options. One is maybe you really don't have the time, energy, or the funds to do anything to fix it up. You're just like any, there's so much to be done that not only from just maintenance to updating, and we it could be 50, $60,000, let alone how much time will be involved. We just wanna get it sold and sold fast. Well, I also have a lot of investors that I've worked with, and these situations sometimes I find is to offer it as an off-market property. So we don't put it on the MLS, we literally just keep the house as is. Sometimes I don't even remove all the belongings in the backyard. Sometimes we don't even remove everything from the inside of the house. And I set up a time for investors to come through. I do a minimum of 10 investors. So you are sure that we're gonna get lots of opinions here. The investors love off-market because they think they're finding a deal or getting something that not all the general public doesn't have access to. Well, a house like this is not going to appeal to a lot of the general public. It really will appeal to mostly investors anyway. So the investors come in and it's black and white to them. There's no motion. They run numbers. They figure out what they're going to have to put into it and all of those things. And they give you an offer and they're all going to be cash offers. So you'll have the funds from the sale of the house in 10 days from the first day of them looking at it. You don't have to worry about anything. They will even remove any of the items that were left behind. So it's really an easy solution for you and you will see some varying prices that are offered because of having at least 10 investors. Sometimes I've had upwards of 20. So you can rest assured that you got the highest price for the house in its current condition without lifting a finger and in 10 days you have your money to all divide between you. Easy. On the other hand, if you are willing to do some work, you have some time, I actually have a ton of contacts, a lot of vendors that help me in situations like that and we can fix up the house. I can so I basically act. act as a project manager for you. I have a decorator that picks all the, the tiles, the flooring, the paint color, any light fixtures, countertops, all the things, you don't have to worry about it. I bring in vendors to get all the work done. I've worked with all these vendors before, so I trust them. They understand the urgency to get it done fast because we are getting this on the market. We are not doing a spec house, meaning we are not creating a house that is gonna be to the nines necessarily and top of the line everything. I know where to spend money and where we can save money so that ultimately you are, will have the most money in your pocket at the end of all the expenses and fees and everything. I also can help with some of the costs. 
So that's something every situation is different, but I can pay for things up front and get reimbursed out of escrow. So that's an option. Scenario two, the house is in fantastic condition. It's great. Whoever you know you inherited the property from updated the house over the years. They maintained the house really nicely and it looks great, fantastic. But there are still some things we need to do. We have to get inspections on the house, especially when you inherit a property. You are not as responsible for all disclosure like a typical seller is because you never lived in the house. So by having the inspections done, a home and pest inspection, total cost of both of those around $700, you pr protect yourself from a little bit of liability by not disclosing something, even if you didn't know it existed. So we get those done. I bring a stager in. I don't know if the furniture has been left behind or anything, but my stager will either use the existing furniture or bring in her own, bring in accessories, and houses that are staged can sell up to 20% more than houses that aren't. So we definitely do that. I bring in the professional photographer, I do the property website, get all the marketing so that I can present your house in the best light to get the best price possible. Then the third scenario is, what if the house is right in the middle? Whoever you inherited the property from really maintained the house nicely. Maybe they have upgraded it at some point, but maybe that was kind of a long time ago, so it's still dated. Um, but you don't really need an overhaul. We just need to do some things. Again, I bring my little team in and I can act as a mini project manager to get paint colors picked out if we need to do any light fixtures or drawer handles or a lot of little things we can do, we don't have to do huge. But those are three different scenarios. They're kind of obvious, but each one kind of has a different strategy attached to them. And like I said, this is what I specialize in. So I wanna hold your hand. I wanna take the brunt of the work off for it. The one thing I don't want you to do, my mom was living in the house the last five years alone. My dad had passed away and one of her last dying wishes was that she loved yellow and she wanted the whole house painted yellow. And I come in and I'm thinking, we kind of need to update that color. Uh, we maybe need to do a few things, but you're like, absolutely not, Annie. This house is worth so much money and I am not gonna ruin my mom's memory by or painting the walls a different color. I have to help you understand that this is, unfortunately is no longer your mom's house and the money that you get out of the house is really everything she's leaving to you. And with that, you can go do something really special in her memory, but it's my job to get you the most out of the house. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm here to be a resource for you. One of the other best things you can do is go below and click on my link to find out what the value of the house is currently. Again, my name's Annie Baker and I hope to meet you soon. Until then, have a great one.